How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf. And uh, today is a little bit more of a chilled video in the end. I've uh, got a few little bits and bobs, missions and things I've been up to. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of exploring with a loaf, getting a mission done, the um, what's it called, bottoms up mission. My loaf's going to become a cargo loaf. I've, uh, I've missed my little cargo loaf so he's going to deliver a semi-fuel trailer. Um, and then going to have a little look at rescuing the HX520 that I kind of rolled off the size, side of a broken bridge uh, yesterday in the live stream. And then lastly as well, at the end of the video, there's a, a UFO in the air that, um, again, thanks to Pipe Dreaming for letting us know, he's the one who spotted it. And also I believe it was Mark Rowe that uh, kind of double confirmed that there's definitely something there. And uh, yeah, I tried to have a little look for it on the live stream, but I couldn't find it. And it was one of them, I was just, I need to go back in my own time so I can properly have a little look at my own pace without uh, a load of people <laughs> kind of watching, waiting for results. Um, yeah, I mean, long story short, tonight I was going to start, I, I did start, um, I was going to do the Aegis installation exploration video, but um, yeah, partly I, I woke up a little bit late with an absolute banging headache, I still tried to go and do the thing anyway, and then just tonight, for whatever reason, the bugs, each little bug this game has is just lined up and took it in turns to absolutely troll me, so I've been getting all kinds of little iffy bugs that have been driving me mental. And then the last thing I wasn't too keen on, but it is what it is, I kind of know now, so I'll, uh, I'll take the necessary preparations, i.e. an extra loaf and a prototype trailer. But when you go down various roads on the Aegis installation, they're all roadblocks, and it's like, I don't really like that, because I quite like the freestyle nature of exploring a map, like... I might choose one way, you know, and there's a hundred different ways you can loop around and do whatever you want, and uh, loads of different vehicles you can do it in. But that Aegis installation felt like it was just a dev saying, oh, unlucky, no, you're not going that way, turn around, go the way we're going to make you go, because we're going to fence off and block off every other option available. So it just, instead of feeling like a kind of sandbox that you just do your own thing, it had a very linear feel to it. But again, just between that and the bugs and a banging headache, it was for the sakes of the video quality, I was like, just abandon mission tonight. I'll, uh, like I said, this was a good excuse to, I wanted to do this mission at some point. Um, also show you about the UFO and that. And yeah, get a few little bits and bobs sorted, have a bit more of a relaxed mission. And then like I said, tomorrow, I'm, uh, I'm going back even more prepared for Aegis insulation and we'll get that. So I'm having a good old time in my life. I always do. There's a nice little bit of drift action going on there. And then he just found himself some breakable ice. Sometimes the loaf can drive over breakable ice. It seems to be hit and miss as to when, but I've definitely, it's in a few videos, I have drove over it before. Fortunately, he's got a pretty good uh, long winch on him, so I've grabbed some over there, I assume like a dead tree or something. And uh, yeah, like I said, at the minute, this was um, probably like the day after I did the Erska River exploration video. And after that, I just wanted to scout this map and collect all the missions on the map. So I had them in my list, they're already activated, I can just turn them on and off as and when I want, I can see what I need to do with them. It just helps, like, particularly with making videos, but just in general, to be honest, I like that way of doing it, where I've, I've just got every mission to choose from. And uh, yeah, this loaf, where I started from, was like, where I got the first watchtower, you're on a little island where there's two bridges that need building on that island. So that's where I started, I also just scouted the two bridge missions with the loaf. And uh, yeah, then this one now, I'm heading over to the Bottoms Up mission, which is uh, where you got to grab a semi-fuel trailer and take it right near the Cosmodrome entrance. There's a fuel station, but it doesn't become a fuel station until you take this semi-fuel trailer, which I didn't really know, but as you'll see is about to happen, things, <laughs> things just progressed. So like at this point in time, yeah, my original intention was to just uh, drive through this yellow square up here, activate the mission, and then zip off. I was also heading to the Cosmodrome entrance because I wanted to see can I just travel through it or is it is there going to be like a mission that I have to do to unlock it. So yeah, that's the one. Grab that mission and I was looking now. <laughs> that's where the little pause for a second like, well, I don't know. The game does imply that I might need a saddle low for this one, but I've got a feeling my horse, I mean he's a horse. He's been around saddles. So yeah, it was just like, well, while I'm here It'd be rude not to just flip the trailer back onto its wheels so that when I come back later with a truck, it's already flipped. And then it was like, well, <laughs> while I'm here, it'd be rude not to just turn the trailer around so it's facing the correct way so that when I reverse a truck up to it, I can just grab it. And uh, yeah, long story short, I mean, it just kept going like, ah, oh, just one more. <laughs> Have another little tug. 
That's what she said. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's kind of the Lotus at a little bit of a disadvantage there because he was leaning on that hill quite a lot, so he's trying to kind of pull the back end of my loaf off the terrain. But I moved a bit further up the hill. He was uh, he was towing it up there pretty pretty decently, not only just for a, uh, a little scout, but the legs on those trailers are pretty notoriously bad for kind of digging into the terrain. But my loaf is a goddamn professional. He's also skilled in the art of digging into the terrain. And he digs in even better than that trailer. So I was able to pull the trailer near me, kept going, got him a bit further, uh, parked behind this lamppost. That was now easy mode, like the trailer doesn't really have much choice in the situation. Again, back in the day, like the first month or two of this game, when the winches were just great, that would have happened even quicker. Went behind it, stick a winch onto the uh, lamppost, give it a nudge. Every time I see the back of that trailer, I can't help but think, God damn, look at the arsehole on that. And then, yeah, I mean, again, it's all, yeah, well, it'd be rude not to get the uh, trailer up to the road. Then I needed the trailer to face the right way, so kind of reverse at it, stick a winch on the uh, telegraph pole or whatever, and kind of lever, lever it round. That's the one. We've got it. And then, yeah, it's like, well, while I'm here, I mean, we've got to check, haven't we? So you stick a winch from my loaf to the trailer, then it has no choice but to kind of wedge me under it. Uh, if you don't have a roof rack on, it will sit on the top kind of easier to reverse your way under there, but the roof rack adds an extra little bit of height to the trailer, so the actual um, trailer legs are, like, quite pretty decently off the floor, all things considered. And then, yeah, just stick a, a winch from the front of the loaf to, like, the actual pin of the trailer that kind of hooks into the saddle is an actual winch point as well, which is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. But then it was at this point where I was like, oh, God damn it, I've got um, muds on. And it's one of these road sections where it's just that slippery black ice. And, yeah, this thing's just wheel spinning like crazy. So I thought, well, we've got this far. Stick the handbrake on. little victory horn because I'm still pretty happy. Long story short, I brought a Tatrin and a chain loaf. But then my Tatrin got stuck in the ice. And when I say stuck, I mean, I'm doing a double loaf wedge. The thing ain't moving, like, it was locked into a piece of ice that just wasn't letting go. So, I was like, just tag team, switch them over, leave mud loaf there and uh, chain loaf. I mean, look at him going. <laughs> Matt thought he had him. My loaf is a limbo loaf as well. You don't get him that easy game, and he's off. And again, I need this uh, top engine. I mean, he's still making a nice little progress at the minute. And even over all these rocks and everything, these rocks would be like the Tatrin's worst nightmare. But the loaf, well, look at him go, he's zipping through him. He's thick, but he's also nimble. And it is ridiculously good at climbing over rocks for whatever reason. Like, literally one of the best vehicles in the game for climbing over rocks. Like, those size rocks would stop a Kolob. And a Tatrin. And Dolphin ain't too keen on them. <laughs> and he loaf. He's off. See how, like, with those winch points, there's immovable trees there, but it prioritises the ones that pop out of the ground first. Which is interesting, because it points to the fact that they obviously understand the concept of prioritising certain winches, but they've chose to go with prioritising the crap time-wasting ones over just letting us winch to a solid tree first, which, let's be honest... If you're going to stick a winch from a vehicle to a tree, you're not going to pick a one inch thick shrub that's two foot tall out of the ground. You're going to pick the big fat juicy tree right next to it. But anyway, we got up there, um, yeah, stuck the loaf back under the trailer, got the winch, connected it, and we're good to go. Now I've got chained. Good things are happening. Me little cargo loaf. Just quickly chained in the time of day there, and sort of moving the winch point over. It'd still be pretty cool, like I said, <laughs> if you could have like a little saddle, or if there was a little. I suppose the only other thing that would be quite handy, if there was a winch point on the roof, a bit like the crane point where you can lift scouts, if I could just winch that to the actual pin of the uh, trailer, that would be quite nice. But long story short, I mean, it works pretty well. You kind of hoover the loaf underneath the trailer. Those legs on the trailer kind of back up to the loaf, or near enough that I can, if I wanted to. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, there you go. Told you. My loaf. My loaf delivers semi-trailers. No problem. Certainly, uh, well, as far as getting on that last hill, anyway. That Zix 605R, for example, that new beastie truck, that wouldn't have got up that hill because that isn't got a, yeah, hasn't got the option of chain on it. 
the Tatrin wouldn't have got up there. To be fair, the Dolphin would have handled this mission pretty well, not going to lie. Yeah, but I didn't have, didn't have a Dolphin handy. I had a goddamn horse with a vehicle. Nice downhill section that helps things. I was just in, busy enjoying the view there. I kind of should have been paying more attention. The trailer was slipping off to the side of it. But because it's a black ice hill, I was just kind of walking it like a dog <laughs> the rest of the way. And then it was only when I spun the camera around now. I was like, oh, we're here. You've arrived at your destination. I can't tell, actually. Maybe I'm just looking then. I can't tell if it was already a fuel station or if you had to do this before it became one. Well, as you can see, I didn't really know, because the first time I ever got to this part of the map, I was, yeah, already on it. I was pretty happy with the results of the loaf there, even though he's going pretty slow through this mud. I, not far off, got, I can't remember if it was the Dolphin or the Tatrin, not stuck in that mud, but about the same slowness. And, uh, yeah, they're big trucks. Like the loaf's got the littlest tyres in the game. But those little tyres are good. I like them, because they're how he digs into the terrain and grips on like a madman. So... It's a price worth paying. And yeah, I only cut out like 10-15 10, 10, seconds there, just turned to the left. Kept it pinned, fingers crossed, and we were over. What I would do, knowing what I know now, is just come down the main like black ice road until I'm level with this yellow box and then just do a hard 90 degree turn over that little bit of snow because it's almost like super mud all along there. But yeah, mission done. Goddamn horse of a vehicle. He's hauling semi trailers with the best of them. And then, yeah, for whatever reason, you'll see when I do my horn, he does this every now and then, probably because he was just happy that he got to be a cargo loaf again. He has a little bounce when you do your horn. Having the time of his life. Trying to scare the shit out of that bird that flew past. And then, yeah, detonate the man's fence. My work here is done. So, that was one mission down. This one is, uh, yeah, the HX520. But as I said, if anybody uh, seen the live stream, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> I rolled it. I mean, that bridge is out. You have to go around the bridge. But then that tree that's halfway stuck in my HX520 is like immovable and trollish. But fortunately for me, I had a goddamn horse with a vehicle stashed on the back of the trailer, so it is what it is. It's my win. Starts first time every time, like I said. If it don't start, you ain't turning the key hard enough. So stick a winch on that tree. That kind of starts levering the trailer. It's already levered the uh, HX520 enough to where that should fire its engine up now as well. Let's me loaf out of danger. <laughs> when I reverse, I even knew as well I was doing it. I was eating while I was doing this, by the way. So, this is how easy it is to rescue with a loaf. So easy, I was having a snack midway through. But yeah, I was also driving one-handed. <laughs> the old one-handed rally special. So, once I reversed, I didn't have time to stick the brakes on or fling a winch out. So, dropping me loaf down there, this little bit, that sort of leaning tree stump was sticking on me a lot more than it perhaps should have been but yeah we soon got around that uh, yeah drop me loaf into this little bit here because I'm now I'm kind of wedged behind that bridge which can't move that levers my uh, HX520 over a little bit more and now I try and get this thing out fortunately I did actually still have the crane on the back so uh I suppose as well, just for what it's worth, I never really thought about it, but the HX520, I suppose I'll mention it in the review video, it can have a crane, a sideboard, and still attach a trailer, so at least it's got like the holy trinity of trucking on this game. But this truck itself, at least on these maps, is completely out of its depth. Like, it just can't handle these maps. And as I said uh, the other day, like, they've added a lot of stuff on this phase, and I'm happy as far as the amount of content and all the rest of it. And I wasn't bothered that they didn't add any new missions on, like, the original base maps. But since they've given us two slash three trucks that just really aren't up to, like, handling me these maps, they're just not capable enough, like, they're not built for these kind of maps even close. So the Zik 605R is the only thing, really, that we've been given that is of any use. So um, even though, yeah, like I said, we've been given a lot of content, it'd be nice to have some missions on the base maps to try these trucks. I noticed something weird here. I packed the cargo... And I put two lots of cargo in my sideboard and one on the trailer. And it keeps jumping one piece of cargo over to the trailer instead. Now, it doesn't seem like a particularly big bug or anything like that. But just bear it in mind because it kind of has a little bit of a knock-on knock effect later. Where it's just one of those things that... Yeah, it's, it's minor. But I really wish they would actually pay attention to some of these bugs. Because it's funny how they patched the... Um... 
the money bug out. So they managed to patch the one bug out that helps us all, <laughs> but leave in 50 bugs that they've slowly broke along adding the last four phases. And uh, yeah, they're not sorting them out, but they're obviously aware of bugs if they fix the bloody money one. And I mean, this truck, this was just a little bit of gameplay, to be honest, with this truck. Like I said, it's a. Uh, because they are new trucks, I kind of want to use them, get as much gameplay with them, and just generally have them in videos. But sadly, they're just. I'm going to have to be very particular about which missions I choose, and they're going to have to be pretty bloody easy missions, really, because these things just can't handle it. And the fact that it only gives you the all terrain chained as well sort of doesn't help. But yeah, they're just, I mean engageable diffs, it'd be nice if at least one of the trucks had diffs always on. But we got the uh, yeah the HX520 out of there, sending in me loaf, can't leave him behind. Got to this point, bumped into that trailer, I was like what? Apparently those ramps are too tall for my loaf, I was like mm, I don't even quite understand game. You don't say no to a loaf, he'll find a way. So I don't know, he just gained a few inches in the last few seconds because he got up just fine the second time. Pack him on and we're good to go. And uh, yeah, like I said, this was trying to do the second landslide, or the second one I was doing. When I did this uh, a mission the other day, doing the first landslide, landslide on the path or something, I believe it was called, I took enough supplies to then head to the second landslide, which I believe is called landslide to the quarry. And yeah, I just as soon as I cleared that first landslide, this thing just got stuck in super snow and that was it. It was like, it was all she wrote. Um, like I said, in the live stream, I quickly, as I was on my way past, I tried to tow it with a H, uh, sorry, the Zix 605R, and then I rolled it off that bridge. And then we're back here now, where I thought, well, I'll try and crawl my way, just the rest. But yeah, this thing certainly wasn't coping too well. I mean, most of this is heavily edited, I'm not going to leave the whole bit of me heading there. But there's just a few little bits where the truck <laughs> was actually moving of its own steam power, which was nice. I made a change. What a treat. It's a shame as well, because yeah, when you get them into high gear and that, they motor run. Like I say, these would be great trucks for maps like Michigan and all stuff like that. Which I assume, I don't know, but if you... Even if you had a fairly new game, if you downloaded and you've got the season pass and you've got phase four and everything, I assume you can still just buy these straight out of the... Uh, out of the garage, it's like when I start a new game now. Well, it actually lets me have a few vehicles. I start with the Navistar, uh, the Khan Marshal. I believe it lets me have, yeah, the Apache, but I bought that. The Western Star, but it also gives me the Bandit. But it doesn't give me, like, the 7 F750 and all that stuff, so... I'm not sure. I don't think it will give you these, but at least you could sell, like... Well, I sell the Apache every time, so that thing's bloody useless. Um, yeah, at this point, it was going well at the start. I've been down here before. It's funny, because... My original idea with clearing this landslide was to uh, make this a viable option, but this is not a viable road <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. I'm now glitched into some ice, absolutely just locked in place. You can generally tell, if you're doing full power on the winch and you're not even moving a millimetre, you can't even see your truck jiggling or trying to move, yeah, you're just locked. So I winched to a tree behind me, kind of leave it around that way, I think the trailer just kind of popped out of whatever it was uh, hooked on. And we'll go again. Also, the trailer gets a bit of a lean on at the minute. Yeah, I think there's those little bits of ice there on the back axles that it was sort of hooked in place. Again, it likes to go for a lean, but me loaf, he's hanging on well. As long as they don't unpack. <laughs> That's all that matters. You can lean as much as you like. I mean, this was at the top of this hill. Normally, I got stuck or near enough here the other day in the Dolphin, but I went off to the left of where I was just hooked on the ice. And because you could see little tracks leading up this hill, I kind of thought, oh, I'll go this way. Maybe it's a little bit easier. Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe it is, but it, again, this truck just isn't up to this map. It just can't handle the terrain. So this was just the last little bit of footage where I was actually able to move under my own steam, but I soon hit more... Super snow or death snow, I'm not really sure. It depends what this truck can handle. I don't know how bad it is on super snow. I need to go and test it. Again, I'll be doing a review on this and the Cat CT681 
and the uh, Brigadier. I might do the Brigadier next just so people know, like, do they want to buy it from the store or not. And this, it got so bad to the point where now, I'm not even accelerating, you'll see my revs, or oh, my fuel usage per minute just sits at 3.7 I think it is. Because I'd just be using more fuel, I'm using pure winch power now and just slowly crawling through the mud. This is sped up 8 times faster. But yeah, if I was flooring it, all I'd be doing is using more fuel. And I've got spare fuel on the loaf, but as I said, with that little bug where it jumped a second piece of cargo onto my trailer, now my loaf, I would bet money on it, is too far away from my truck for me to just transfer the fuel. So I'd have to unpack the loaf, drive it off the trailer, drive it nearer to the truck. And you see, it's just little knock-on effects where it's like, I wish they'd tidy up what they break each time they had a phase. Again, they managed to patch the bloody money bug. And I'm not bothered about that, personally. I got my money's worth out of it. I got tens of millions out of it, so... I'm not bothered that it's gone, but it just shows that they can patch things and fix things. They're just too lazy to, I assume, because that's the only other option. Like, they're obviously aware of bugs. Um, yeah, that's the mission done, but uh, like I said, I don't think this is <laughs> particularly a viable road. I'll be looking for uh, alternate routes. Well, once you get all the bridges built and all the landslides cleared, it opens up quite a nice bit of a uh, road. Anyway... Lastly, uh, this is the UFO. You can kind of see it in the top there. I'm going to change the time of day though because it's pretty hard to see at that point. I'm in the bottom corner, um, kind of the opposite corner to uh, the Cosmodrome entrance. And yeah, the UFO is kind of up in this black void up there. I've got my dolphin facing towards the Cosmodrome entrance and I'm in first person view looking out my window. <laughs> I just put like a seriously obnoxious arrow there. Um, yeah, looking out my window behind me. That was the only way I could get the camera high enough where I could actually see it. So there it is, I zoomed in uh, a little bit more. It's definitely, well, it ain't a cloud, <laughs> I know that much. Zoomed in again now, it looks like classic UFO footage. Almost get the feeling you're being watched. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's, it's clearly not a cloud. <laughs> and that's it, so like I said, looking out the back of my truck, um, and then I just wanted to check the different times of day. In the middle of the day, like, is it 1 in one p.m. or whatever, you can barely see it, it easily just blend in with the clouds. 8.30 at night or whatever it is, uh, you can see it pretty clearly. Again, you can see this is a first person view looking out the back of my truck. So it's right behind me now. Because look, I can just see it there at the top of the screen. But when I tried to look for it the other day on the live stream or yesterday, whenever it was, it just, yeah, I need it like, it's bloody hard to see in third person. But yeah, first person behind you, it's all good. And then at midnight, it's pretty easy to see at midnight. Six in the morning seems to be the clearest. It stands out like a sore thumb then. But yeah, thanks to uh, Pipe Dreamer for pointing us that out. It's like a little Easter egg, which is pretty cool. But that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.